Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, I'm going to help you broaden your Photoshop skills by teaching you a very easy, creative technique you could do. It's just kind of a vertical blind look. Today's Photoshop video, like the Photoshop video I did earlier in the week, comes from an older issue of Practical Photoshop Magazine. I think it's the April 2018 issue, but I'll double check that and I'll have it listed in the description below this video. This technique I'm going to show you today is just a fun, creative thing you could do, but hopefully it will help you further your Photoshop skills. Now the first thing you need to do is load an image into Photoshop and it doesn't matter what type of image. I'm using a portrait but you could do this on any type of image. Then get the rectangular marquee tool. The M key, M for marquee is the keyboard shortcut. But be careful because that keyboard shortcut is also shared by the elliptical marquee tool. So just go over in the tools panel and just long press on the marquee tools and make sure you're using the rectangular marquee tool. Then what you need to do is draw a thin rectangular strip right on the image. You could do it on the left side, right side, doesn't matter, just start at one end. And it really doesn't matter how thick it is, it's just how creative do you want to be. In the magazine, they drew relatively thinner strips. I'm going to do relatively thicker strips. and. Again, it really doesn't matter the thickness, and it really doesn't matter, like, I guess, how far from the edge you're going to go. But I'm going to do a strip about this thick that is about the same thickness of what I have left on the left-hand side. Now, we're going to create a new layer. Go over in the lower right-hand side and click this little plus sign, and we're put a blank layer at top. Now, we need to fill this little strip we drew with a color, and it really doesn't matter what color. I'm happening to, my color swatches on left happen to be black and white. It really doesn't matter the color though. So I'm gonna fill it with black. I'm going to hold the Option key on my Mac. It's Alt key on a PC, and tap the Delete key on my Mac. And you can see that it just filled it with black. Uh, option or Alt will do the foreground swatch, and Command or Control will do the background swatch along with delete or return on a Windows computer, and you'll get uh, the fill done. Now, what we need to do is get rid of those marching ants. Hit Command or Control D to deselect. Now, what we need to do is copy this little strip we just drew on here. Uh, to do that, get the Move tool. The V key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the Move tool. Now, to get a copy, hold the Alt or Option key in, and then just click and drag it out. You see we're dragging away a copy. And again, I'm gonna make it roughly equidistant. You don't have to though, you could vary it and make it you know, whatever distance you want. You don't even have to do copies like I'm doing. You could do individual drawings with the Marquee tool, some real thick, some real thin, and as you go, just keep filling them with the color so I'm just doing it this way because it's a little faster. Now, um, you can see over on the Layers panel, we have two layers that have strips on them. What we need to do is merge those together. Hit Command or Control E to merge those down. Now, again, hold the Alt or Option key and click on either of these black strips and draw it out again. Now we need to merge these down again. Hit Command or Control E. Then hold that Alt or Option key in again and drag it out again and drag it right to around there. And merge it down again. Hit Command or Control E. Now I'm going to reposition it. I'm just going to click on it and drag it to the left a little bit like that. Okay, so now we have these black lines on a layer above our image layer. Now what we need to do is add a little depth to this. So we're going to add a drop shadow. Go down here where it says FX, click on that and click on Drop Shadow. Now, um, you could use, you know, whatever settings you think. This isn't like, this again is kind of like the creative part. 
you could um, experiment with this and it will give you different looks. I'm going to go with like a 68 degree uh, angle and uh, 51, zero and 46 is what he used in the magazine as I recall. And maybe around 38 opacity might be what he used in the magazine as well. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. You can see there's a little bit of a drop shadow there. We're gonna click okay. Now click on the background layer and we're gonna duplicate that by hitting Commander Control J. Then we're just gonna drag that to the very top of the layer stack. All right, now it's covering everything up. Now like that video I did earlier in the week, we're gonna clip this to the layer directly below that. To do that, the easiest way and the way I always do it is I hold in the Alt Option key and then I just kind of hover the cursor between those two layers. And when I do that with that Alt Option key clicked in, you can see the cursor turns into the square with the downward facing arrow. Just click with the left mouse button when that happens. And you could see that now we have this effect. Now I mentioned you could vary the drop shadow. If we double click on the, the words drop shadow, we bring this up again and then you could come in and you could vary this. You could see I could make it darker. I could make the spread more. See, so you could do all these little things to try to affect it in a different way. The size. So do whatever you think, you know, you need to do to give you this creative effect the way you want it. And when you're, you know, satisfied, just click OK again. Now, uh, what they did in the magazine and what you can do as well. I kind of like it like this, but uh, they offset it. To do that, click back on that top layer and then hit Command or Control T to get the free transform tool. And then you could just click and drag to offset it a little, if you like. Um, you also could just grab handles and make it like larger or smaller or something like that. But you got to be careful. You start to see those black lines that we had if you want to do that. Um, overall, uh, when you're satisfied with it, I can just offset it just a little, maybe. Yeah. All right. Just a little, click this little check mark up here and you're done. So that hopefully, um, just will broaden your, uh, knowledge of Photoshop and teach you some things you could do in Photoshop that you might be able to apply to other, uh, projects you have. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.